Hey, what's up guys? Uh, today we got a catalytic converter here. We have a Honda Accord here, 2003 model. From 2003 to 2007 is a similar procedure, right? Acura TL and Honda Accord, similar procedure, right? They have a similar engine, similar catalytic converter. And I'm gonna give you full details. We're gonna take the camera in there live. It's not about me doing the, doing the cat and then showing what I did later on. No, we're gonna do it together at the same time. Anyways. So this is the catalytic converter, it's back there, it's really tough to get to, in the front it's much easier because you can remove the fan, you have a lot of room. But, I'm going to give you all the torque specs and everything, alright, every single little detail I can, alright. I am going to be replacing new oxygen sensor customer requested, alright, usually I will do sensors first. Uh, but anyways, we got two bolts and two bolts, three bolts in the bottom, there's a flex pipe in the bottom, Y pipe, we're going to remove that. Uh, because this catalytic converter is going to go down, alright? We're not going to have room to pull it up. We can have room, but there's studs here in the bottom, alright? And top, there's studs in the block. So, in order for you to get it off, the bolt would have to, this would have to slide. But since there's studs, they're not going to come out. You can try to take it off, but there's studs in the top. So, that needs to slide back. You cannot just lift this up from the bottom, alright? Anyways, not too much talking. Let me take this camera to my computer. I'm going to show you what we're going to do exactly, all right? Oh, here's a close-up look of the cat right there, all right? This is a walker. I'm going to give you the part number also. All right, guys. I have a 2003 Accord here, V6. That's what we're working on. And we got a code for that catalytic converter. The one in the back, all right? Not this one right here, all right? So I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of videos on this car. I'm going to be doing an axle, the heater core uh, valve there for the coolant is bad, engine mounts are bad. But I could take all that out and I have a lot of clearance. But I'm going to do it one thing at a time the way you would do it, all right? So the one in the back is a little tough to get to, all right? Right now the car is nice and hot. I'm going to get these bolts out. But let me explain to you a little bit more, all right, before we go any further, all right? All right, so right now the car is hot. All the bolts are hot. We might not have to heat it up. So I got this little ratchet here. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna see if I can break it loose without snapping the bolt. That's a number 12 bolt that I, socket that I have on. All right, so there goes nothing. It did move a little bit already. There you go. Not much of clearance here. So I'm gonna just loosen up all these bolts. And I do have this one loose, all right? And uh Alright, there you go. Let me see if I get my ratchet to go on so you can see. There you go. This one's pretty loose. All right. And now I got two more to go. And the camera is not going to see it. I'm going to use a little extension. Let me see if I can get that into the clip also. So pretty much I'm using this long ratchet with the number 12. All right. This is like a one foot long ratchet here. All right. That's what it is. Easily. I managed to get this on simple. All right. But with that extension, it's going to be so much... There you go. Did I miss it? Let me see if I can get it on again. All right. Uh, there you go. I got it on. All right. So we're gonna have to fish it from here. This is this is it's all about being a fish catcher here. There you go. The bolt is loose. I just want to loosen these because the car is nice and hot. All right. Got one more to go. Right on the other side. All right. So I'm going to get that one also. And then we'll continue. All right. So this is the brand I'm using. That's the part number. And also we got two seals. Part number here. And uh, part number right there. Right. This is a uh, triangle looking one right here. This is in the bottom. And this is... Uh, no, this is gonna be in the bottom and this is gonna be uh no this is gonna be on the top of the where it mounts onto the block to the engine all right and this is gonna be in the bottom all right all right on my 
my system i usually look at everything right so this is a pipe down below that i might be rooming that thing has a uh, three bolts here all right i had somebody show up anyways so here's the specs i want to give you guys the specs all right a lot of people ask me the torque specs because i usually don't record it so the bottom bolts on these right here the three and three bolts three bolts here three bolts there they're 40 foot pound all right i will have specs for these two little bolts here 16 and these right here, uh, there's a, I don't see specs there, but we're not going to go that deep. So we need these three and these three, all right? 40 foot pound. All right, so let me go and see the catalytic converter itself. Going to my computer, it will not give me a lot of information how to remove it. Should it go down or should it go up? So we have to make our best judgment. So we have four bolts right here where I'm pointing at, right here, one bolt. This is a stud. This is stud, stud, stud here. This is the gasket. It goes through one right there one right there one will be on the opposite side same place this is so and this one right here right so these bolts right here let's look at the specs go up there they're 23 foot pound right there you see that 23 foot pound and then in the bottom uh these are the bolts i showed you earlier all right and then the shield right here they're 8.7 foot pound and uh oxygen sensor are 33 foot pound and 33 foot pound up there all right so both of those sensors so we're going to be removing three bolts and three four bolts and the cat should be loose these oxygen sensor i'm going to let this one drop with it i'm going to just disconnect the connector the one in the bottom i'm going to see how the bottom setup setup is the bottom one goes over here to the side here and if it has the same uh, it can come down with it nicely and smoothly i'm going to just let it drop right with it all right and that's how simple it should be the shield and there should be another shield to the side over here sitting on top of the rack and pinion and that protects it all right the shield we're probably gonna have to reuse i don't know what's gonna happen we might have to order from the dealer because that one looks a little corroded and the bolts might not just come off anyways let's get this thing going We're underneath the car right and i'm gonna make a judgment here how we're gonna remove this what we're gonna do here right all right so there's a catalytic converter right there that's the oxygen sensor right here i'm gonna have to disconnect it. it's coming from all the way up there so it can just come down with it all right so we're gonna remove these three bolts right here one two and this one over there which is gonna be tough to get to all right and then we have one two three and then if you want to remove just this piece right here these are never looking pretty so i'll try to manage to remove this muffler and push it to the side a little bit all i need is this much space even if i could get this guy to come over here right i'll remove these two bolts right here but these right here they're supposed to be 14 but i've done so many of these in the past they're probably uh 13 all right so i did have bring a socket here here is 13 all right fits on it perfectly 14 is going to be loose all right but don't just smack these you will break these bolts and uh i'm gonna try to heat them up all right i want to take them one by one now all right i'll show you one or two and then you will do the same procedure for that one and then we'll continue all right i am doing an axle on this car so i might be removing the axle shaft all right and then the intermediate shaft and that's gonna give me heck of a room and that thing is gonna fall in my hands like a newborn baby all right so anyways let's get this thing going let me get one or two bolts and then we'll just continue all right if they break it's okay because you've seen the new cat it comes with the new studs but that side you cannot break them all right all right so i got a mini torch here this is what i'm using all right you could get this for like 32 bucks and 32 or 60 bucks first time investment and then you have this all right It's always important to heat things up on exhaust system because you do not want to break anything, all right? Even if it looks good, I heat it up. All right. So let me get this going and then we'll see how they pop open once it's ready for me to come out. There is a small little tubing for the, partly for the power steering, so be careful. number 13 and let me get it to reverse and there you go one on the floor rolling right there 
All right, number two. Oh, the stud came out with it together. It's all right. It's all good. All right, and the third one. All right, where did it go? Right there, right? So we got all three out, and it's hot, don't touch it. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing here. You're not gonna see me do it, but same similar procedure right there, right? Three bolts, heat them up, and we'll remove them. And the two bolts on the opposite side, one, two, three, all right? In this one, it happens to be 14, all right? 13 did not fit on it. 14 was the perfect size, all right? So we got that out. All right, like I said, everything is nice and hot. So this is the best time for us to do it. All right, we're gonna remove the two 12s here, all right? There's a 12 here. Let me remove the opposite side first. Let's put this over there. Once we do this, the muffler is gonna try to fall down on you. So be careful, have somebody help you or take one of the bolts. All right, what I would do is make sure this is not hot. All right. Take one of these bolts and just leave it right there. All right, so it's not gonna let it drop on top of your head. And then, we can simply remove this second bolt. All right, so this bracket is nice and loose. So this exhaust is just stuck there. All right, and we're gonna try to bang it out a little bit. All right, and once it's down, I'll show you guys. So I'm gonna try to wiggle this down a little bit. All right, over time it might be just stuck the seals. All right, so there we have it so far, looking good. All right, and then I'm gonna disconnect the sensors and remove the little tabs for the sensors right there. All right, so everything is nice and loose. And we still got the three bolts in the top, four bolts, but they're loose. Point where we need to remove the axle, we're on the passenger side axle. Like we have oil filter, house, uh, oil filter right there. We're gonna change that too, because look at the condition of it, all right? Anyways, to remove the axle, I'm not gonna be going too much into detail. So I'm gonna remove this two bolts here so I don't put any stress on this line. ABS cable needs to be freed up from up here, from down here, all right? I'm gonna take off this tie rod. I'm gonna remove that bolt and bang this and pop this open. I'm gonna take out the cotter pin, remove this control arm, feel the control arm also once it's out. And then we have a 14 millimeter bolt right there. We're gonna remove that. And then we have a 17 down below, all right? And this might be a 36 or a 32. And after that, well, I'm gonna call the custom rod. It breaks it down to minimum, all right? But anyways, this comes off and uh, we'll pull off the axle and then we'll have access down there and we'll remove the intermediate shaft. You are gonna have a little bit of antifreeze, uh, not antifreeze, uh, par uh, uh, transmission fluid come out. So we do need to top it later on. All right, so let's get this going. All right, I removed this bolt. I don't know what the heck happened to my camera. So I use a 32 millimeter here. All right, so just match up your size. Sometimes you change your axle, it's a different size. But that's what I took off. Damn this camera, all right? All right, next, I'm gonna remove the 10 here. And 10 right there, all right? This is gonna release my brake line here. So if you wanna remove an axle on this car, Follow these procedure, all right? Should be similar for both sides. All right, so there you go. This is off. Only thing I'm gonna tell you guys is while you're watching it, so don't be disappointed. I'm gonna finish up. And you're not gonna see me torque, all right? Because those are the critical points. I cannot be, because I need to use both hands and I cannot be bothered by anything, all right? So there you go. And then I'm gonna remove this one right here also. The reason why I'm removing these is because once the spindle come forward, we don't want to damage any of these, all right? So let me get this off and then I'm working on my camera's not even watching. So I took off the bolt here and a number 10. Number 10, number 10, number 10, number 10. All right. There you go. 
and the ABS line should be wiggling like that. All right, so let me go get my uh, tools from here and I'm gonna remove that cotter pin. All right, the silly cotter pin comes out by pulling it and usually if it's good, reuse it. If it's no good, just put another one in. I usually use this cutter, I grip it, and I just pull it, and that's the way I take it out, and I'll put a new one in. All right, so this is number 17 millimeter, but I'm not gonna take that off yet because I'm gonna take off the tie rod down here first. All right, so one mistake I made, I told you guys 32, but I used a 36, all right? This is a 36. That's for the axle bolt right down here, all right? But down there, if you don't have a cotter pin on the tie rod, which I am gonna put, but it's a number 17 millimeter, so I'm gonna remove that. The reason why I wanna take that off first is because I am gonna bang it just like I'm gonna bang this. I'm gonna bang the tie rod area right here, all right? So let me go get my hammer. All right, so you might not be able to see this, but I'm gonna bang right here, and that tie rod should pop up, all right? I'm gonna be down below. Oh, I'm missing. There you go. And the tie rod pops up just like so, right? Anyways, now it's time for us to remove the 17 there. All right, same thing. We're gonna use a swivel because you're not gonna be able to get that out straight, all right? There you go. And what I like to do is I like to put this bolt back a few threads and then I like to bang right there, all right? You do sell a tool for you to pull these but that usually damages this and it's a hassle, all right? Can't put a fork, you'll damage the boot, all right? So the best thing is you tap it right here. There you go, all right? You see why I put that bolt in there? Because this thing would have fallen on me by now. All right, so next two steps, all right? Which I am not gonna be recording in the camera. I'm gonna take off. This bolt right here, 14, and this one right here, we have a nut on the opposite side. So we're gonna have to hold the one side and turn, the, we're gonna have to hold the one side and turn the other side. This is 19 or 17, but that's definitely 14 right there, all right? So let me get that off, and then, then we'll have this yoke out of there. All right, so most of the stuff I got out, this yoke here is already free playing, all right? Let me set up my light somewhere nicely where a camera can see but it's not gonna come out unless we remove this bolt completely all right so you can just push down it and move this bolt and then you let the spindle come forward slowly pay attention to these lines all right so we're gonna be replacing this axle anyway it's all good for the stretch all right there it goes the horseshoe all right you only can put that thing one way all right because if you put it the other way around the bolt will come in the front all right but anyways the axle comes out just like that and we can take it out from this end all right we need to bang that axle from the other end with the pry bar. You're not gonna see me do that. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a pry bar. Like, let me show you in this hand. So on the other end over there, I'm gonna put a pry bar right here. And I'm gonna tap it with the hammer in the back and it should take it out of the, the intermediate shaft, all right? So that's all I'm gonna be doing back there. Oh my God, guys, look at, look at what I have on the floor. Axle, all right? So as soon as I tapped it, it just fell down to the ground, all right? Because it had enough clearance. I thought I was gonna hit this. But it didn't, so let me move this a little bit so this line is not being stretched out. All right, and now we can see the intermediate shaft. I'm gonna take a small break. We're gonna go a little bit higher with the car and we should be able to take off the bolts of that intermediate shaft and the shaft should just slide right out. So I'm gonna 
underneath the car now. It's gonna be one heck of a video here. But I got a 14 bolt millimeter with a little extension there. The extension has a little bit of wobble to it. And I'm gonna be using this ratchet that I got. All right. And let me see if I can fit this onto that. And the bolt is loose. We're in business. All right, I'm not gonna be taking the bolt, this one right there, that's for the cover, but look at the mechanism I use there, all right? This one has a little wobble to it, this extension, all right? So it lets me maneuver that around. It's about two inches long, and that's it. That bolt is loose. And then we got another bolt on the other side, so let me take this off completely. Again, once we take this apart, you are gonna have transmission fluid coming out from this end. All right, if you need to replace the axle seal, it's all up to you. So, like always, I like to take off the hard bolts first because the easy bolts, they hold everything in place for you, all right? So, let me get this out. Like, you already know what I'm doing here. Once I have it out, I'll show you, and then we'll go on the other side also. I'm still working on this. Let me grab my light. So I went to get this small little ratchet, quarter inch, with a swivel and a small extension. But that seems to do a pretty good job on this little guy. And there you go. It turned by hand and it stopped and it turned and it stopped. So I decided to put this on. If you want to take the shield, go ahead. Be my guest, all right? But this is all. Let me show you. So this is this was another setup I used right here. Let us swivel with the inch and a half long extension and a 14 millimeter all right maybe i can take it off by hand oh yeah there you go putting this back i'm gonna be getting the other bolt first it's gonna be very critical for me to catch all the threads first all right so this is what the bolt's gonna look like there you go and we got one more on the other side so let's go get out under this car right this is the second bolt right there. I'm gonna remove that. Oh, I hit my camera. And is there any other bolts? I don't see any, and there's one up above, all right? It's gonna be very tough for us to see, so remove this bolt and one up above, all right? And then we'll talk once everything is out. All right, so for this, I'm using this gear wrench 14, all right? And there's one bolt right up above it. Try not to damage that power steering pressure switch right there. And let me see if I have a good angle. And there you go. Bolt loose. Make sure you keep the bolts in order because they can be different length, all right? So guys, got all this loose. I'm gonna have to put my hand in there and camera's not gonna see, all right? So I'm gonna get them both out and then we'll pull the intermediate shaft and we'll put a little bucket down below. All right, so I got this bolt out. See this little bolt that looks something like that? That's one on the bottom. And the one from the top is this one right here. It looks a little different, all right? So I kept these two together and that one stays separate over there. All right, so I'll put my bucket down there and I'm gonna grab my light. And let's see if this guy comes out and I think that shield is gonna bother me I might have to twist it a little bit ah the whole time I should have taken that shield out but I'll just bend it a little bit inward all right oh god everything is just ah uh, should have taken that shield out but it's okay it's okay so i'm gonna take a pry bar and i'm gonna just bend this area right here a little bit in and then we'll push it out once we're done all right i did bend it a little bit you can barely even tell i just yanked it's flexible then it goes back to the position and i already passed the little guy all right and intermediate shaft comes right out all right and there it is if you need to replace this intermediate shaft there you go all right let's put this nicely i don't want to touch the ground all right i'm gonna get my phone and then we're gonna go underneath and look at the spacing now the phones are going banana they need to make a law all right so anyways all right so we have 
more than enough clearance probably just to take this out from right here but guess what we do got the three four bolts up there and we do got the oxygen sensors all right so the oxygen sensor let's remove these clips right here ah they broke i'm gonna have to put a tie rod over time it's cr it's just crusted and there's one up there just pop it off the screwdriver all right and uh leave the sensor in there i'm gonna leave this little guy in there all right the reason is because i'm gonna i want that to support everything for me for time frame so this is a little metal bracket i'm gonna just leave it there but it's very important that we put this bracket back onto the new one all right all right so we're up here again we need to get the full bolt all right and the oxygen sensors so the oxygen sensor connector they run this way all right hard to see but just try to manage to remove the connectors but like i said they're hard to see all right very hard to see let me just point it all right so there's one right there and there's one right next to it. All right, those are the two connectors you're gonna pull off. And take off the th four bolts, like I showed earlier in the beginning, of the they're loose. So all I need to do is continue and just take them out. Let me not record this part, guys. Just do your best, take your time, take it out of there, all right? Okay, a little bit update. So, look at that. It's wiggling around in there, all right? The catalytic converter is loose. It's held in by the bracket down below. Took off the four bolts, they came off with the stud. All right, the nuts and the studs come out together because it's rusted. That's how it's gonna be. The gasket fell down, very important. If it's a metal gasket, guys, I'm gonna reuse the same gasket because metal works really good, all right? Then those are paper plastic, they blow over time. And then you will have a mess, all right? All I need to do is disconnect the sensors and then we'll go down below and we'll bring the whole cat down together. Alright, so there's our sensors are loose and the cat is just wiggling there. This bolt right there is what's holding everything up, alright? So I am going to have to set up my camera because I'm going to need one hand to remove that bolt, one to hold the catalytic converter, alright? Alright, so I'm going to tie it up here, try to hold the cat. When the bolt comes out, I'm going to just let it fall out. But let's see this catalytic converter comes right out like a baby. All right, there it is. And it's out. Not gonna be disconnecting these sensors because we are gonna reuse the new ones. And we're gonna put the shield on, which doesn't look in good condition. And I'll try to reuse it, all right? All right. So there's my old catalytic converter and here's a new one, all right? It's shiny, all right, it's new. I put the shield on, number 10 bolt, number 10 bolt on the opposite side right there. And then I have to put a clamp in because it's all corroded. I had to heat the crap out of this and I hammered a number 10 on top of it and took that out. Make sure you put this bracket in the same manner, but it's loose, you see that? It's loose because I still need to put this up and then I need to maneuver that catalytic converter around so I can mount it onto the manifold itself, all right? So, here goes nothing, all right? And there's my old seal on top of that. I'm gonna be reusing that. I'm gonna clean that up real nice, all right? So here goes nothing. Let me set up my camera up here and then we'll put this in and I'll put the number 12 onto the block there and that will hold the catalytic converter up. Okay, here goes nothing. And the catalytic converter, I don't have my sensors on yet. That's okay. Is in. And should I have cleaned this up so much oil on it? That would have made it a little bit easy for me. All right, so let's get it in there. And I need to put that bolt in. go once I catch a couple of threads I can just let it sit and then I need to get my number 12 I'm not gonna tighten this either yet I'm gonna just snug it so it's just there right 
So I'm gonna give you more torque specs on some of the major bolts, but bolts like this, this, and those little on the shield, those are hand tightened. That's no problem. But I'll give you on the axle, and uh, if I find any torque specs on the intermediate shaft bolts, and that I will do. All right. But let's continue. Now we need to go back up and finish up the job from the top, and then we'll come reverse procedure pretty much. All right. All right, my friends, I'm gonna have to apologize. Like you guys know it already, this is really tight, all right? It's really tight over here for me to work on, all right? But there you see it. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing is, I'm gonna just like that, the way it's sitting right now, I'm gonna put this gasket on and I'm gonna put the two bolts on. And this gasket does go in this manner, all right? It, it, you could uh, probably uh, match it up with the old one, all right? So I see this side has a lot of oil on it. So the oil is on that. So this was simply just like that, all right? So if I take this gasket, I'm gonna hold it like that. Give me a moment. I'm gonna put two bolts on it and I'm gonna drop this gasket onto that with the bolt and then I'll show you when it's hanging on it. Okay, took me a few attempts to drop the gasket, drop the bolt, but there you have it. You see that? I'm gonna slowly try to maneuver that and get that in there, all right? That's the only way. And that's the only possible way, all right? But don't drop anything through that oxygen hole. And then you're gonna have to take everything apart unless you reach something with the magnet, all right? So a little bit update. Got the bolts in. As you can see right there. All right, so I'm gonna finish up the job up here. And then we'll go down below. All right, we're into the car. So what we need to do next is we are gonna tighten the number 12. That's gonna hold this bracket and the cap together. All right. So take it easy. You don't want to crack the pan. That's that. Also, we got this bolt right here. It still needs to be tightened. All right. We can put the oxygen sensors later. It's not a big deal. All right. And I will give you the part numbers on those. So. This bolt is not really a bolt, it's all stripped and gone and if you can put a new bolt in, that's up to you. But I made a mistake, I should have put a new bolt, but that's okay, for future sake. There you go, got it. All right, next, just make sure you check to see if you have your O-rings together, which is good. All right, I'm really not feeling much there, yeah, it's there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I do have a sealer that goes here, all right? Sealer onto this, this little guy. So I'm gonna go get that and I'm gonna put a little bit that onto that, all right? Okay, never mind. We're gonna do that later, all right? Because we need to put our intermediate shaft. That was the next step, all right? So the intermediate shaft sits right down here. Very simple procedure, all right? So from here on, guys, just reverse everything. Just the way we took off, we're gonna put back in, all right? Let's twist this because we're not going to be able to twist this later on, all right? I might have to come back out because it's already at a point where I cannot twist it. Ah, come on. One hand. Feels disabled. <laughs> Let me take this guy out. This was all dirty, so I put that little tissue there, all right? It was getting onto my arm. Push this axle a little bit. Once the axle gives us the clearance, this thing should align. Swatch with your hands. Let's see where we stand down here. All right, so the problem is we need to get this guy in more, a little bit more further before the other side goes in all right not looking good not looking bad either it's just that you need a second person all right so let me see if I can manage it from down here right oh okay, I see it's going getting stuck right there right so we got to go back out it's never gonna go and then come above that line and now I can come back out here and try to give it a small little twist and a push. 
going back in and all we need to do is line the intermediate shaft into the transmission make sure this side is in just like that bada bing bada boom everything sits perfect make sure you put the same bolt that goes everywhere i'll try to get you guys the specs in a little bit but let me finish up the job because i am going to be torquing all this later on all right so that's there let me leave it right there because i think i should put in the easy bolt first so i caught a couple of threads there all right and then i have two more bolts here that go on this side so the weird looking bolt goes in the bottom so let me just put this one to the side for now all right so this one goes right there hopefully the camera can see it all right there you go got one or two threads oh i didn't all right so i'm gonna get these in you get them in and keep up with the good work all right guys so this is the paste that i use right here all right there's a number there it's three five nine five nine all right gasket sealer system it's like a tart from the road all right that's all that is all right it looks black just like that and that's what i use but before i do that i want to match up my bolts because i think those bolts are not gonna fit there the one i just took off earlier all right so i'm gonna just take this a little bit and i'm gonna put it on top where the seal is supposed to be at seal is there but i like to put this sealer this prevents it from leaking all right i'm gonna do the same thing in the front end you're not gonna see it but same thing all right a little bit of that sealer it's simple it stinks but it works good all right now is where i need to stick this muffler in and put the bolts in all right so that goes in line it and I messed up. I'm gonna have to go get the socket. Alright, have your socket ready. Push this in. So you guys already know it. This is done. Alright, this is pretty much done. The job is done. Put everything back together. And then we'll put the axle in. And the sensors will be the last thing. Alright, so it's time to put the axle in. I got everything tight like it's supposed to be, all right? So here's the new axle, all right? So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take this axle and line it. And you can use the axle to push it itself in, all right? If it doesn't go in, get a rubber mallet hammer and I'm gonna tap this in back of the axle right here, right? I don't know if that's in, but let me take a look. I'm gonna take the light for a second. Okay, it's not in. It's definitely not in. Right, I think I'm gonna have to hold it up a little bit so it's nice and straight. And then tap it in. There you go. Woo! Perfect. All right, so the axle is in. Next, we take off our big bolt of the axle. And we take our axle, stick it into the hub here. I'm working over here. There you go. And then, above we're gonna take our control arm and have the bolt ready for this control arm all right just watch your fingers almost pinched my finger between the spring and the control arm and if you can catch one or two threads quickly enough you'll be in luck uh, that was just one lucky. There you go. 
All right. One thing I forgot before putting that, put this lighter guy in, all right? Cause it's gonna be a little bit, little bit easier, all right? Now it's gonna be a little bit tough. All right. <sighs> Talking about good luck and bad luck. All right, so let me get this guy in. I'm down below, directing down below here. I'm exhausted. I've been on this car for the last four or five hours. The waiting might not be that long, but I've been on it for very long. All right, also while you had it, So the procedure is reverse. This is the 14 bolt. 19 goes down here, 17. And then put everything back together. That's it, I'm not gonna stress it enough, guys. Make sure you lock up the axle bolt. Make sure you put the tie rod in. Everything gotta go in like it's supposed to be, all right? So thank you for watching. I am gonna take a little bit more longer after I say thank you. I'm gonna give you a little bit of specs on everything, all right? So most of the stuff, whatever I can find, whatever I did, what I am, what is left behind, all right? Still, oh. Okay, I'm gonna continue the video because Visa got the sensor to put in, all right? So stay tuned. All right, so everything is nice and tight. This bolt is tight. These are tight. That's tight. I gotta put a cotter pin in. That's tight. Changing the tie rod. Got the axle. This bolt is tight to the spec. It's like 100 some foot pounds, 134, I believe. I, I showed that already on the video. I need to put in that notch. Don't forget to put in that notch. Bend that notch, all right? But other than that, all we got left is. We got this little bracket left here to put the mount right here in the oxygen sensor which i can get from right here all right so those are the things i'm gonna do all right so it should be a small little procedure i don't even need to show you but here's the part number this is the upstream all right this is the first sensor right this is this sensor right here right it has a different connector so you cannot go wrong right and the one after that the part number let me show you the part number on the first one so the part number for this one right here is right there two three four five zero ten zero downstream this is the downstream right it has a longer cable the part number for that is two three four three i'm sorry two three four four three six eight and this is what it looked like make sure you put a little bit of that and of course i want to show you the axle right there's the axle, the part number, all right. Guys, I got another channel. It's called RC USA. I do a lot of bashing. Got all these trucks. I do heck of a videos. Check that out, all right? If you need a link, send me a message. That one runs on water. We're gonna do videos. All these run on water, right? Sand and water, those are pedal tires. Don't forget to subscribe to my other channel. Give it thumbs up, all right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this sensor we gotta put a little bit of uh, anti-seize on it. You take this, all around, all right? This sensor is the downstream, it goes in the bottom, all right? So I'm gonna jack up the car and we're gonna finish this out, all right? Let me leave this here and let me get the car up in the air. All right, got the sensor. We're gonna go underneath and the sensor goes into the port right there. You do need a tool to tighten this, all right? And I already showed you guys the specs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten all this up. I'm gonna zip tie this sensor right there and up on the top. And uh, that should be it from down here. And you guys already have the specs again, all right? And I still gotta complete, take the tie rod out and put a new tie rod in. But that's how simple it is. Make sure you zip tie everything. You do not leave anything loose. Double check all your work. The bracket for the intermediate shaft is tight. These two, three, two bolts are three are tight. These are tight. I still need to put two bolts in this. And bada bing, bada boom, up on the top. That speaks for itself. Sensors are very easy. You put them on, tighten them up and line everything all right so guys thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe i'm gonna do my push-ups and i'm gonna put my camera right here like 
like always, push-ups are push-ups, all right? Got to do my push-ups, all right? So here goes nothing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All right, because this is a job too big, so I did a little bit extra. Intermediate shaft, the half shaft, it doesn't give me anything, but I tighten that to best of my ability, okay? So just be careful, make sure you tighten it really nice and good. And the upper control arm. All right, make sure you put that cotter pin in where it belongs, right there. This bolt has specs. All right, it'll give you right here. All right, 35 foot pound. All right, so those are the main bolts and the tie rod. I could not find a spec on that. All right, some specs on the, the yoke here. So this bottom bolt here with the nut is 47 foot pound and this top 14, mil 17, yeah, 14 millimeter bolt is 32 foot pound. So there you have it. Make sure you line the shock and the yoke right there perfectly evenly, all right? And we have our tight arm bolt right here, 32 foot pound. All right, this is a V6 engine, 2003 to 2007. Acura TL should be similar. If you guys need specs, if you want me to double check, I can just send me a message. I will do that for you. But anyways, thank you. Subscribe, share, and like, and bye-bye.